So if you look back at Aristotle, the famous Greek philosopher, he wrote in the introduction of his, uh, one of these major uh, books, uh, Ta Metata Physica, Metaphysics, the first sentence uh, reads like, all human beings by nature desire to know. Okay, so that is really a fascinating sentence. So science really is the actualization of this paradigm and you would see this paradigm at work in children. Children have an incredible desire to know and a scientist just translate this into practice. Actually the best science is done by young uh, scientists. Young scientists have the energy, have the imagination, have the stamina to uh, think and to test even the craziest ideas. I think the most important thing that I appreciated when I was in the US is uh, an extremely democratic system of research. So whether you are a postdoc or a graduate student or an undergraduate student or even DPI, when you are in a group you are just a scientist and you are a thinking mind like everyone else and your opinion counts as much as the one of your PI, for example. And so this kind of model of extreme democracy is what I have uh, tried to export actually try to import. <laughs> a lot of new ideas come from my students <laughs> and uh, I think I have fewer and fewer ideas on my own. Um, I have to say we just uh, do a massive parallel effort of testing uh, many many different things in the lab. You think we are like kids and indeed we are. We play with toys. So this is a, a molecular model. So all this uh, uh, things here are atoms and bonds uh, holding together the atoms. Uh, I recently bought a bunch of these kits and uh, all my have disappeared from my office because all my students have taken them. I think it helps you a lot. It's much better to manipulate things physically than uh, with, uh, with the computer. As a scientist who look at uh, uh, materials which are very, very tiny, so materials that are at the scale of nanometers, you cannot look at this material with a regular microscope, you need to use an electron microscope. So in, instead of bombarding your object with light and look at the light reflected by the object, we bombard objects with electrons. When materials are very small, um, electrons actually cause a lot of damage let's say it causes a lot of transformations to the material. Um, many of these transformations are just overlooked or not really discussed a lot or investigated, but they are important. And actually structural, chemical, compositional transformations in nanomaterials appear faster than in, uh, let's say, bigger materials, bulk, a chunk of matter. If you think about the nanotechnology revolution that everyone is trumpeting since, I don't know, 20 or 30 years, uh, then you will see that people have been promising that nanomaterials will be used in solar cells, in satellites, in shoes, in everything, okay? But no one really thinks that uh, when you put a nanomaterial into an object, uh, that material will transform very quickly because you will have this object in the desert, you will launch this object in the, in the space, so it will be bombarded by cosmic rays, uh, it will be in a very dry environment or a humid environment and so nanomaterials will deteriorate really fast. So understanding how nanomaterials in general uh, transform under, let's say, harsh conditions, uh, it's something extremely important. We already are collecting all this knowledge and we are using this knowledge to make devices. And this is really the hard part because uh, many of the things that I had in mind when I wrote the grant proposals uh, turn out to be much harder to do. So this is really the challenge. Receiving the ERC was, uh, was a very big joy, was uh, an extremely happy moment in, in my life. 
I am one of the lucky person who, who got this uh, sort of email twice. Uh, I hope it's not going to be you know, just the, those two times. I hope I will be able to write other successful grants in the future. Every single word you say during ERC interview uh, may, may make a big difference and might be worth a lot. Chinese say uh, a picture is worth uh, a thousand words and uh, I would say a word is worth a thousand euros. So both times, uh, of course, as I think everyone, I was, you know, really stressed before the interview. Then I was thinking uh, within myself, I know much more than everyone else on this topic in this audience, so I'm gonna make it. And I made it, yeah. <laughs>